think before we start, we need to have a little bit of fun. So, first of all, there's a lot of comments about my shirt. And I want you all to know that it's, um, let it be to me according to the word of my wife. So, because we're going to a Hawaiian uh, party at the life group afterwards at Bruce and Leisha. And I think I just want to say thank you for a year of wonderful, wonderful Tuesday evenings. So um, I was going to put the shirt on afterwards and said, Natalie said, no way. Uh, you have to wear it. And then without mentioning any names, Jenna and Louise, um, I, I got some, some Christmas gifts. And um, there's two reasons why I have to wear them, because I had to make a pinky promise that I would wear them, so that's ticked, right? And number two is that I, I feel like I'm standing on holy ground, so I'll be wearing my socks just to remind me this is holy ground where, where God's presence and His, um, and His glory is. <clears throat> so this, this mom had three sons. <laughs> And uh, so they all left the house and um, started prospering. So they thought they want to thank their mom and send their gifts. So the first one was in construction. So he sent his construction team and they built him a most beautiful house for a mom. And he felt so proud of himself. And then the second one is in the motor industry. So he sends his mom this amazing car with a driver, and felt very proud of himself. And the, the third one found a, um, he said, you guys don't really know mom like I know my mom. And I found a, a parrot, let's see, and it took the elders of the church 12 years to teach this parrot how to recite every single verse in the Bible. So you just say the verse, and the parrot recites it. And... Uh, sends the parrot off to, to the mom. Soon after that, three letters came back. First one to Milton. Milton, my son, the house that you built me is so big, I only stay in one of the rooms and I have to clean the rest of the house. Second letter, Gerald, you know that I don't get out anymore and I can hardly see anything. So the car is standing in the garage and the driver that you sent to me is really rude. Third letter, Rudolph. <laughs> Rudolph, you are a boy after my own heart. Thank you so much for really understanding my need. The chicken that you sent me tastes delicious. <laughs> Mm. So, Pete, don't sit down. Please come here. Pete looks like the kind of guy that loves to open up presents. So, Pete, I brought you a present. I was just wondering where you are, but now, you, now you're here. So, Christmas is all about gifts. But before I give you this gift, Pete, do you believe that this gift could bless every single person in this room? Yes. Can I open it? Yeah. There is plenty here. Wow. Sure. Look at this. <laughs> hey! How's that, Mark? I love you, bro. <laughs> there you are. They can share it. Eh? Please share with Pete. <laughs> He's just given away everything. I want to talk about uh, Mary this morning. And my mom is here. And I just want to take a moment to honor my mom. Uh, thank you, mom, for many, many things. Of which one is I'm still alive. No, I'm serious. Uh, so we're to 1989 when we didn't have cell phones, sticky boxes, 2 o'clock in the morning. 
put the 20 cent in. Hi, mom, we're leaving now. She would stay awake on her knees and pray. Four o'clock in the morning. Hi, mom, we're all still alive. Uh, we come back. And yeah, many other things, but I um, just want to honor you for being here and all the years of just, I would say, praying me into the kingdom. And then when Ryan Matthews was here, he said something so profound. He said, Jesus and myself were developing this special language that when he speaks, I know it's him. I thought, oh, wow. I'm also sensing something like that, but he, he coined it in such a way. So I said to Jesus before this morning, I would like to talk about your mom. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, yes, she's a very special person. And um, Jasmine, where are you? Have you run away? You led worship so humbly and beautifully. And when we were in Amazon Toti, she said something so special. She said, I want to just dedicate my life in a deeper way. And um, Kerry anointed her voice and Charmaine as well on the beach. And I'm, I'm sensing a difference since that time. And during worship, I just felt Jesus' presence. Just He just came. It's just he's here. I know that he's here, but he's, he's come to sit down and to listen what we would say about his mom. And that's very, very special. And uh, it's so awesome because I don't even have to read because Lisha's going to read. This portion of Scripture reveals so much about who Mary is. And everything that I'm going to say this morning is in this portion of Scripture. So we're reading from Luke 1, from verse 26. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. There is so much in this encounter. It's an actual encounter. It's very supernatural. She's encountering an angel. Angels talking to her. There's a love letter from the Father towards her. The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow her. And it's interesting just to see how does she respond. Well, she was troubled. <laughs> have, you, have you seen that when there's encounters uh, in Scripture, the first thing that comes out of the angel's mouth or out of Jesus' mouth, it says, don't be afraid. <laughs> because it's a supernatural encounter. Rejoice. She considers, she's troubled, she's asking questions. It's okay to ask questions, to say, Lord, what are you saying? She said, how can this be? And then eventually she says, let it be to me, according to your word. So the first thing that happens is that Mary wonders. She wonders. You see, being a child of God is not just going to church and going home. I had a beautiful experience. 
there was a guy who came and worked with us in Video Center Township. We would go there every Monday night, and we would do training, and then we would go out and win souls and make disciples. And he sat there, and he, for the first four times, his wife forced him to come. And for the first four times he came, he wept. He just sat there and he wept. And uh, Bruce will like this because it says lacquer. It's lacquer. He says, my whole life, in Afrikaans it says, my whole life for 30 years was kept to H2. Go to church, come back home. And in the last four weeks, I have seen more people get delivered, touched, saved, baptized, than in 30 years, and he's weeping. He is in Saudi Arabia now among unreached people groups, sharing the gospel as a fighter pilot mechanic on a contract there. That's what God has called him to do. And he's alive and burning for God's glory. One touch from heaven shifted everything. You see, there's more than just going to church. There is a sense of some kind of wonder. Outside of you, putting, your, putting a finger on you, coming to you, dealing with you, but then loving you. So when we had the pastor's dinner here, there was a lady called Nao. Kerry knows her very well. There's a beautiful photograph of the two of you putting your noses, pointing your noses at each other. She's such a ball of fire. I don't know how she got onto that list. Um, I looked on that list, and then we were looking for table hosts. And um, so I said, no, would you be a table host? She said, listen, I'm not a pastor. I'm not pastoring a church. It's my first time to a pastor's dinner. You want me to be a table host? I don't know what is a table host. Then she came early, and we had an Africa Enterprise strategic meeting. By the way, next year, September, Joburg is going to rock for the kingdom. It's going to be a whole year of preparation. You'll hear more about it. She ends up in a strategic meeting. The director of Africa Enterprise flew over for this meeting. Now she's sitting in this high-profile meeting. She comes to me, and she's like overwhelmed that she's amongst these, uh, what, 50, 60 leaders here, and she's, she's saying what's going on. And she says, she walks up to me, and she's like, I can see the Holy Spirit's all over. She says, do you have a word for me? Do you have a word? I was going to say, yo, go dish up. That's your word. You know? I, remember, I remember I heard when Rama first started, people would knock on Rama Corley's door um, in the wild days at 2 o'clock in the morning. Pastor, pastor, do you have a word for me? He says, yo, go to sleep. Do you have a word for me? I said to her, yes, the book of Esther. You know that she phoned me. Uh, in this week. She said, I've, I've completed. I said, I, complete, I forgot about it. I completed what? She said, I read the whole book. And she said, I read there that for such a time as this, I've come into the kingdom. Now she's involved with DIA. She's involved with Time to Rise. She's involved with the prayer circles. Suddenly, something has completely shifted uh, in her life. She's having a kind of an encounter with God, is what Mary had. And there is a love letter for you and for you and for you and an encounter, and a consideration, and a process that God is busy working with you. Because the good work that He has started in you, He's going to complete. So Mary, she wonders, and then she considers. It's okay to consider, to think, to ponder. Is this God? Is he speaking to me? You know what, Sherry, I think you're going to like this. Actually, I know you're going to like this. Actually, I am fully confident that you are going to. I am so sure that you are going to like this. That I'm just going to read it. It echoes what, when you preach, when you, I just want to say that there's a, there's a beautiful teaching anointing on your life. And you need to know that God has, Hold you and it's going to get stronger and stronger because you're yielding, you're seeking God. But in your preaching, it sounds something like this. Mary is not saying, what is she not saying? She's not saying, it's clear now. <laughs> I get it. It's crystal clear. I love this plan. I love this plan. I'm so excited to be part of it. 
Thank you very much for delivering the email. I've opened it with attachment. You know what she's saying? She's saying it doesn't make sense at all. But I will pursue and I will follow. You know, these two, they're sitting here uh, in the front. Actually, Dave, he's not here, hey? So, Dave is busy tuning Mark at Life Group, okay? And um, I love the way Mark responded. He says, Dave, you need to watch your tone. But while you watch your tone, continue. <laughs> so you can continue to talk to me, but you must adjust that attitude. You know what? That is a very, very mature way to handle a very, very difficult conversation. It says, no, the, the, the agri the, your, this aggression attitude that you have with me, I think just check it a little bit, but continue. I, I'm still here. I'm going to listen. It's kind of like, Mary, this is really intense, but let's continue. Let's move. Let's move further. You know what Mary is saying? She's saying this. She says, I am a poor, uneducated girl. Remember, she was a teenager. She's saying, I will be a social outcast if you, God, bring this child into my life. She's saying, how is this supposed to be saving the world? Do you know that Annalisa at one of the Missions Connect sessions that we had. She said, God has spoken to me about thousands of people coming into the kingdom, but I don't know how it's going to happen. But God has shown you something. And how is this going to save the world? I don't know. How am God going to use me to touch the world? Have you ever asked that question? I know there's a calling. I know there's a word. The angel answers her literally with God. Nothing is impossible. Actually, Derek, you've had a word from God. What the angel's actually saying, and he's saying something to you, is no word from God will ever fail. And Eli said, put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> no word from God will ever fail. Blessed is she who believes. So Mary wonders. She considers. And now she responds. She starts responding. You see, Mary has been trained not to believe that God could ever become a human being. Think about her background, her culture. God cannot become a human being. God is God. and We are here and he's up there. So she doubted. She questioned. She has biblically theological questions. She reasons, and then she makes a decision. She makes a decision. You see, this decision is not blind obedience. This is what I find the most fascinating thing about this material going through this. It says, but it is one who is, this decision is theologically grounded. It's a theologically grounded decision. You know, the Bible says, let everything be established by two or three witnesses. So you have the witness in your heart. You have the witness in, in the word. But you also have the witness of people that you can trust, that can speak inside of your life. And when you line those things up, and then you make a decision, right? It's a good decision. It's a solid decision. And even if that decision is a total disaster, God will work it together for the good. I think Grant spoke about that. It says if you go down a hill with your mountain bike and you go this way and you go this way, or if you go this way, it's downhill. You will end up at the bottom. You will end up at the bottom, but you'll end up alive. A moving car is easier to move than a stationary car. Even if you don't get it right completely, God is gracious, and you will end up, if you follow Jesus, if you just keep following Jesus, you will end up where you're supposed to end up. 
I mean, how did we end up here? How did we end up here? It's crazy. We were talking about it. How did we end up here? It's, it's amazing. It's not blind obedience. When she says, I am the Lord's servant. This is Mary. I am the Lord's servant. She's grounding her obedience that the reality that he is God. He's our creator. He is her keeper. So he deserves our surrender. Our service. But he desires intimacy. My word. How do I know that he desires intimacy? He says his name is Emmanuel. Now why on earth would he be called Emmanuel, which means God with us if he doesn't want to be with us? <laughs> right? The name should rather be introvert. But his name is called Emmanuel. So Dale got this God-man movie and showed everybody, which is so awesome, and then we couldn't be here. And then Natalie and myself, we watched this movie. I fell asleep the first time. Then we have to put it on again. But there's a question that was asked Bill Johnson in that movie. And he says, what do you say to people when they say, how can you say Jesus is the only way? So he answers in two ways. Number one, get with the program. Number two, we don't get to dictate the terms. He is God. We are just. So I want to ask you two questions. And these questions are pretty intense. Are you ready, Lester? You've come all the way here to hear these two questions. That's what I know. I'm actually quite sure. I'm actually quite confident that you've come here to hear these two questions. It's good that you are here, by the way. It's good to come to know you. These questions are really intense, but they can literally shift everything in your life for the good. Are you ready? I see JP sitting in the front this morning. How amazing is that? Can we just clap for that? That means the team at the back, something good's happening there. The glory is actually at the back. I can see it. Oh, it's a timer. All right. So it's the project. I saw this glory. Oh, it's a, it's a projector. Are you ready for two questions, Rich? Sure. Okay, you made a big mistake by giving me the microphone because here it comes. Are you willing, Bruce? Are you willing to accept? Whatever God would lead you into. Let me just read it again. Peace. Are you willing to accept whatever God would lead you into? Because you have a choice. You can say, no, I didn't. I've heard somebody say, if you refuse the war that God's called you into, you'll find yourself in another war which you're not anointed and knighted and wired for. But this is your choice, eh? Are you willing to accept whatever God would lead you into? Second question, Lester. Are you willing to trust him in the middle of those circumstances where he's led you into. So here comes a serious, serious consideration. It's like a marriage proposal. So you have to really think about it. If you, if not, if not, if you've not considered those two questions, Maybe your walk with God does not include lordship yet. Hmm. He is God and there is no other. So maybe his savior, maybe his provider, 
maybe his comforter, maybe his answer to prayer, but maybe he's not yet Lord. If he's Lord, he decides. And you know the beautiful thing is? When you respond to what he says, it shifts everything. It really does. It shifts it for the good. So Mary entrusted her life to the one who holds the universe together. Have you ever heard people say, I'm falling apart. I can't take it anymore. It's just too much. Yeah, we've all been there. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 3. God who at various times and various ways spoke in the time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Whom he appointed heir over all things. Natalie, did you see? I didn't say heir. I said heir. I hear his voice, a voice in my head. Through whom he made the worlds and being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Listen to this. Listen to this. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Holding all things by the word of his power. You know what Mary is saying? It says if you can hold the stars, if you can hold the sun in place by the word of your power, you can hold me. And if I trust myself, if I release myself into this, you are going to hold me and you're going to use me, and you're going to be close to me. She's making a theologically sound decision. So, maybe my daughter is going to cry, but I'm going to cry. So, in, in 2012, after 22 years, after 22 years, in a mission organization, we left. God led us out there. Now what do we do? Well, we had many ideas. We thought we were going to be in Mozambique as missionaries. Many ideas, many ideas. And we came to this point to say, God, what do you want? So I said to Natalie, would you be okay if I pray a prayer and I say to we were in the car. God will we'll go wherever you tell us to go. She said, there's nothing worth more than surrender to the will of God. So we prayed that prayer together in the car. July 2012, 2012, and um, the glory of God came into the car. It was just like, I don't know how, but just this peace came. I don't know where we were going, but we surrendered. So Natalie says, we better tell the kids what we've done. So we called Jesse uh, and Faith into the room, and the only way I could think to do it was, and uh, I'm not an artist, so I drew Africa. See, I'm not an artist. And there's Europe, and there's Asia, and there's Russia, and there's America, and there's North Pole, and there's South Pole. Why are you laughing, Anita? So, Australia, Seychelles. So, oh, by the way, Pauline, this is for you. Israel lies centered to three continents, very strategically. Why was Jesus not sent to the South Pole, you know, North Pole? Sent, and in here sits all the trade routes. Okay, just saying. Paulina's having dreams about Israel, about going to Israel. So I drew this picture, and I called the girls in, and we told them the story. We said, we're going to ask God wherever he sends us. And then... X marks the spot. So on this map, we're going to make an X and we're going there. Uh -huh. and, um, and then this most beautiful thing came. We said, 50% of this decision is the two of you. You have 50% shares. And 50% is us. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I'm leaving the room. You go. You pray. And you come back and say, where is God saying? I need a location. Because X is going to mark the spot. We leave everything. We go there. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if you go where I tell you to go, you will bear fruit there and you'll be provided for. 
two promises. So I go out the room, I come back, I find them crying. Yeah. So now they are at four high. Um, I can't remember the grades. High school. Yeah. All our friends are here. Our horses are here. Oh, in Mozambique, there are no horses. They ate them all. Okay. So <laughs> I didn't see one horse. I mean, the f- five, six mission trips, I didn't see one horse. They've all been... Uh, the mission said, you throw dead animal parts on the fire. That's a bribe. Okay. He said, if we take our horses to Mozambique, and they're crying. I thought, oh, my word, this is really not going well. Anyway, cut a long story short. 50% their plan, 50% our plan. We're staying here. Four ways. We are going there. And this peace came. Okay, that's fine. We're staying here. We're going to stay here. And there's a, on my uh, calendar, on my board, in my office, there's a picture of this. I still have it. And it looks like this. From four ways to the four corners. And then here's a fire, and there's a fire, and there's a fire, and there's a fire, and there's a fire. But what I want to show you, what I want to tell you, is the two of them, Jesse and Faith, continued to complete their professional degrees. And we made that decision to hold their environment so that they can fly. And now that they're flying, we're also free to fly. Let it be to me according to your word. You see, I'm thinking this and this and this, but I had a family around me that had different needs. Jesus puts it this way. He says, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. I've got to save my bank account. I've got to save my investment. I've got to save my house. I've got to save the country. I've got to save the politics. I've got to save. I've got... Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Somebody said to me, when we left there, we left a, a house that we invested in. We, we, we left everything that we worked for, for 20, 30 years. And my sister's husband said to me, so you're probably going to lose everything. You're probably going to lose everything, but hold on to your integrity. You'll get it all back again. It'll all come back again. Jesus surrenders. Listen to Mary's words, and then later on her son says kind of the same word. She says, let it be to me according to your word. And years later, her son says, not my will, but your will be done. He uses his mother's words, but in a different way. And in his own way. What happens? Mary is renewed. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Through the washing and the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. You know what happens next? Mary impacts the world. His mercy is upon those who fear him. She humbles herself. This teenage girl shows us the way. She points the way. She's like leading the way. What does she do? She humbles herself before God. Not my will, your will be done. And you know what she does? She starts worshiping. So, Bruce, I think you're going to have to write this down. I want to give you a gospel line that you can use to touch people during December. Just now we're going to sing that song, Mary, Did You Know? And that song is a summary of this whole preach. Can you imagine saying to somebody, 
I wonder if Mary knew who she was pregnant with. Now listen to that. You're not, you're not pushing anything down somebody's throat. But that one question, can you imagine asking somebody who's not following Jesus? And there's a Christmas card. Mary, did you know? Da, da, da. And you just say, you know, I've been wondering. Do you think Mary knew who she was pregnant with? That is a whole gospel message. Now the person's starting to think, well, I don't really believe that there was a Mary, or well, maybe I do believe, or I don't believe. But you can start thinking to say, she was pregnant with the Son of God. It can open up a whole other conversation. Sometimes we think that we have to be weird and wonderful to reach people for the gospel. But Jesus put it like this. He did not speak to the crowds without using parables. He translated it so that it's contextually relevant, but it carried the anointing, which was still God's word. Mary worships. She worships. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in the God, my Savior. She's not saying, my soul did this and my spirit did this. She's saying, I am worshiping from the depth of my being. She surrendered and now she worships. I want you to say this after me. And as you do, let's glorify the Lord together. These are our words. Say after me, my soul magnifies the Lord. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. Just pause there. Do you know that the purpose and the calling of God upon your life is so powerful that all generations could be touched by what you are doing and your surrender? Mary says, all generations will call me blessed. And it happened. Say after me. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. Thanks, Alicia. If the worship team can come up. Carrying on from verse 39, Mary visits Elizabeth. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in, me, in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Elizabeth prophesies this over Mary and reassures her. She gets reassurance from the, from the person that is close to her. It actually says it was Leah. Lee. It says there that she stayed there for three months. She went on to a silence and solitude into the mountain. And she stays with Elizabeth. And she's reassured that this, this is a big thing that's happened to her. The Holy Spirit has overshadowed her. She's going to have a child. And everything that Elizabeth is saying to her is locked up in the song. So maybe in today's terms, we would say, Mary, did you know? Just relax and um, just listen to the song. And then we'll wrap this up. <laughs> 